Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. Well, it's been a couple of months since Nate and I sat down to talk Cowboys football, but we are doing it again. I'm John Radigan. He is Nate Newton. Nate, what are we doing here? Um, hey, I don't know what we're doing, but I'm going to tell you something. And the name of this show is Let Me Tell You Something. And, John, I'm glad to have you as a partner. My man Isaiah went into some bigger and better things. I We making millions of dollars. I hope he's making trillions of dollars, baby, because <laughs> we're we going to tell you something. And we want to thank Niagara, our sponsor, for uh, supporting us all through this uh, little change right here. But, John... Something big happened yesterday. The Rangers were back in the playoffs. Can you give us an update on that? How about the Rangers? And it was an amazing weekend when they disappointed not only a lot of fans, but they were disappointed in themselves. They had a chance to win the American League West, and they couldn't quite pull that off. But they were obviously not too concerned about it because they came right back out and won game one on the road after a cross-country diagonal trip all the way from Mm. Seattle down to your old neck of the woods, Nate. They went down to Florida, and they're in Tampa now, St. Petersburg, and they won that game because why, Nate? Because of pitching. They won because Jordan Montgomery went seven shutout innings. It was unbelievable. They shut the, the Rays out for the entire game, so the bullpen stepped up too. They're all about pitching at this time of year, not just the Rangers. All teams are at this time of year. It's when your pitching has to step up. They keep getting this kind of performance out of the bullpen. They're going to be fine. They're going to have an opportunity to go a long ways in the playoffs because that offense is going to be there. Last night, yesterday afternoon, they they scratched out four runs. They weren't banging the ball all over that ballpark in St. Petersburg. They scratched out four runs, which was more than enough to beat the Rays yesterday. So you get performances like that from Jordan Montgomery. You get Aroldis Chapman, who was throwing 102 at the end of his stint. And then they call him Pico. You know, uh, Jose Leclerc is just – he's – Found it again. He is nasty. Nate, he's nasty. That ball <laughs> moves. Uh, his changeup drops off the table. You know, he's got that slombio, they call it, which is kind of between a, a slider and a changeup, and it is crazy. Hitters can't can't get, the, get their brain around it. They can't hit it. They can swing. They can't hit it. That is Jose Leclerc when he's at his best. And yesterday, and really for the last several weeks, he's been very close to his best, Nate. I I am a a casual baseball fan. I used to be big back in the day when me and you used to rock and roll a lot. I I had to be it because that that was the sports world that we was in. We was with with ESPN and we was with Fox and we just was all over the place. So I had to be aware of what was going on. So, but my my first connections with this year's team was the big hoopla before this. Uh, the scenario where if they win, they're at home. And then yep. if not, they go on the road. And a lot of people were worried going on the road all the way across the country. But evidently their pitchers wasn't worried about it because you said their pitching dominated the situation. I mean, if the Rangers can get through this, how far can they go? Yeah, it's a really good question because obviously they will start the next series on the road too. They won't have home field advantage in the next series either because they're they're set to face well, one of the two it teams. Why like that? I mean, is it they're, a reset? It, it, is the is the baseball yeah. world changed? No. Yes. 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 It has. It's changed a lot because this is the first time we've ever had one of those series that the Rangers play all three games. If three are necessary, all three would be in Tampa Bay, right? right. Normally, even in a short wild card type series, you have home you know, games and they won't have any in the wild card round, even if it goes to three games, then 
they will face Baltimore in this case, which is the team um, that is sitting there having drawn a bye that had the best um, back, best record in the American League, and so the Rangers will go face them next. So the first two road game, or first two games of the next round would also be on the road. So a very difficult uh, process, but they can go a long way if their pitching can hold up. If they get Nathan Avaldi looking like Nathan Avaldi today. Mm-hmm. Right. They've got Jordan Montgomery pitching the best he they he says his teammates say this is the best he's ever pitched in his career. And and then uh Dane Dunning has been pitching well too. And then beyond that, you're not exactly sure where they'd go yet, but there's a chance that Max Scherzer would come back for the uh the later part of the playoffs and if that was the case, man, they, they could win it all, right? If if Max Scherzer mm-hmm. looks like Max Scherzer and these other three men do what they do, what Jordan's done, what Dane's done, what we've seen Nathan do earlier in the year, they could win it all. But – but it's all that's a those are big ifs. Those are still big ifs even at this point in the season. You play a lot of baseball games. If you watch a lot of baseball, you announce a lot of this. Uh, when I heard this new format, I, I like it because now if you're the top wild card guy, you get to sit home for three games. Now, as the season is winding down, this long season, excuse me, as this long season is winding down. Next year, I promise you, the Rangers are safe because a lot of people are upset at the Rangers for not just winning this last game and taking it. But next year, the Rangers, if they can get through this, there's they will see finally home field advantage is home field advantage. Much like in the NFL, if I win uh, all of the games and I'm the top seed, I get home field advantage. And to be home to sleep in your own bed is 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 a uh, is is a. Uh, it's just a great thing. You can't tell me, even though Tampa Bay lost that first game, they ain't got to go nowhere. Because if, what if yeah. they had to come here, come to come to Texas? They like, oh, we may not make it back. But now yeah. you at home, you could, you, you, you know, with the family, with your, with your, with your, with your fans, you got a chance. They have a chance. I mean, what are their chances? And I'm, I'm saying they have a chance, but do they really have a chance against this pitching you're talking about? Well, yes, they do. I mean, they always do because they were, you know, they won 99 games in the regular season. That's nine right. more than the Rangers did. As good as the Rangers were, you know, the Tampa Bay Rays were were nine game better. Now they started like 17 and six at the beginning of the Ooh. year. They got off to a ridiculously good start, but um, they, they have a chance because Nathan Evaldi, unfortunately, hasn't had quite the same uh, stuff since he came back from injury, and so. You know, he's fought. He's a he's right. a warrior, Nate. He's a right, warrior, right. but like he hasn't that. if you don't have the stuff, you don't have the stuff. So okay. you know, if he can find that today, then the Rangers can just put this thing away today and not have to worry about tomorrow. Now I'll say this about not only um the whatever they might be able to do this year, but the prospects for next year are so good because there's almost no chance that Max Scherzer won't be back next year, right? He's under contract right, right. and he will be healthy and he'll be motivated. And so you'll have Max Scherzer back next year and Jordan Montgomery and Dane Dunning. You've still got Andrew Haney. You've still got, uh, you know, uh, Martin Perez would be a possibility. There's a lot of people in that pitching rotation that can be dominant next year. And Jacob deGrom will come back at some point in the year next year. So it's really amazing to think of if you had deGrom, Scherzer, Montgomery, and Dunning as your four pitchers in the playoffs, man, you are feeling so good about yourself. So the future looks really bright, too. That, plus the fact that two of their best players are Josh Young, who's only been up for a year and eight games or whatever, and Evan Carter, who didn't get called up till September 8th. Two of their youngest guys. Evan Carter's 21. He was on base four times yesterday, Nate. They've got a bright, <laughs> bright future as well as Whoa, whatever's going to happen. You're through excited, this. Yeah, I am. I'm fired up. I'm fired up, Nate. I am. The, 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 so, are they ahead of schedule? Are they right on time? Are they uh, are they are they maturing at the right time? Just go a little bit more in depth on, on that yeah. right there, because uh, I remember when we was coming up and we were we were a year ahead of schedule when we met the Forty ers in the NFC Championship game. So, are these Rangers on time, ahead of time, or or what? Ask them, and they'll say they're on time. 
Ask almost everybody else, and they'll say, I had a schedule. Almost nobody had them winning 90 games this season. I'm a pretty optimistic person, and I thought, you know, if they got somewhere over 81, right? 81 and 81 is 500. I thought I thought they might be a right. little bit better than 500 this year and battling for a wild card. As it is, they were battling for the division, and they won 90 games this year, Nate. So they're, to me and to most people who watch this, they're ahead of schedule. Uh, to themselves, they're not. And in part, they're not because they did, you know, Chris Young, the general manager, see why we call him. He's done so much to put this thing into place to sort of be ahead of schedule. Because if DeGrom and Scherzer had stayed healthy, oh, my goodness, this would be they might have won 100 games and we would be going. Okay. okay. uh, Yeah. Yeah. We'd be we'd be. Well, first of all, we wouldn't be talking about their game yet because they'd be sitting there with the home field advantage. Right. They'd have the three days off. And that does beg this question. I always wonder this. And I'm I think we argued about this on the radio back in the day. Are you a believer in rest versus rust, Nate? I always want my guys to play. Maybe a little different in the in the NFL because you are banging on each other all day when you do play, and there's a great chance of injury. But I'm a I'm a I don't like rust. I don't like rest. I should say because I believe it inspires rust. What do you think on that? Even for a baseball scenario like this. I like to keep rolling. If I'm winning and I'm banging them balls out of the park and my pitchers are throwing it down the middle and throwing all that wicked fire that you're talking about, I want I want to go day to day to day. Uh, when you could start having three and four days off, this yeah, pitchers are used to building up, and it gets a little hectic with them when it gets it'd be short of time. But this is what you've been resting all year for: seven days off, five days off, four days off. This is what you've been resting up for. So when you get into a playoff scenario and you have to go uh, two days rest, you, you should be there. You should be strong. You, you should have been conditioned right. You got good uh, evidence. You got good pitching coaches that can handle the situation. Yeah. Now it's about uh, the mental thing. Can you back it up uh, two days later or three days later? You know because. Uh, back in the day, when me and you used to be talking about this thing, when uh, when they when they was battling the Yankees every year, those that little short stint they had, where they had a lot of success, uh, these guys went in, they was pitching, they didn't care, you know. And yeah. I remember CC Sabathia yeah. for the for the for, for New York, whatever you need, I will give to you. But then that was a large human being. <laughs> As a big man, that is a big big man, yeah. and he cast a big shadow. Yeah. Uh, so. That's baseball, man. It's really fun. It's such a fun time of year because you've got all this potential for the Rangers to keep us so excited for the rest of the year. But, uh, man, it is exciting in the NFL right now, too, especially with this Cowboys team who had a really good bounce back, Nate. I love to see what they did this past weekend where they just came back, took care of business against a coach that handed Bill Belichick his worst loss in his professional coaching career, and they did it. Nate, with defense, which a lot of people said against the Cardinals, it was the defense that let them down. So all that's great. Now it's the 49ers, my brother. Now it's the 49ers. Now this is familiar for someone like you. Back in the day when the Rangers were facing them Yankees, well, back in that day, the 49ers <laughs> were the were the were the rival. And then in your day, the right. 49ers were the rival. And in the 80s, the 49ers were the rival, Dwight <laughs> Clark. You know what I'm saying? So this right, one's familiar, right. isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. And this game is so big for the mental state of these guys, man. And when you're looking at uh the, the, this 49ers team, it just reminds me back in the day when Everson Walls had that bad mishap with Dwight Clark catching that ball behind him. And uh, now uh, we came in with my my era and we broke that chain and, and we kind of literally had the hammer on them. Now the thing is switched back over and they have the hammer on us. Are you still there, John? I see a blank. Oh, man. No, no, no. I am here and I am saying this about that. That game, you already referenced it one time. You were ahead of schedule when you won that NFC Championship game in San Francisco. And that game was just unbelievable, really was, because you had to go on the road, a young team. Nobody really expected you guys to be able to do that, except who? 
Jimmy Johnson, okay. who went on the That's radio right. that week. He went on the radio that week, and he said, put it in three-inch headlines. We will win the ball game. You know what? Up to it. He took a lot of pressure off us as young guys. I mean, we weren't young, the whole team. We had a lot of young guys at the time, but we were inexperienced in the playoff world. And by him doing that, he took a lot of pressure off of us, man, just to go out there and play the best we could play, man. We had played a lot of tough games. Back then, John, you know the NFC East was the beast. Beast, um, yeah. We had uh, – you know, Washington had won a Super Bowl. New York had won a Super Bowl. And we had yet to do it in this new era of Super Bowl. So far as uh, my era. And uh, then, you know, with that right there, you know, Chris, and then with great Chris Berman, never gave us no credit because I think he's a 49ers fan. So he told us, yeah, the Cowboys have got a great team, but they won't beat them 49ers. And we went out there, man. And thank God for Mike Irvin trying to hog up all the balls. And he threw Alvin on <laughs> one side. <laughs> and he went on the other side and Troy looked out there and they still had Mike double. So they took they took uh a man down hop down the middle, man, uh for about eighty yards. So uh we just we just glad, man, that uh we had the coach that we had, we got the, the players that we had, uh uh but what we what we did, I think, and what the Cowboys, this new era of Cowboys have to do is don't look at this as a test. I've been telling everybody, every show I've been on, if you're looking at this as a test, now you're looking to grade yourselves. Now you're looking to see how you measure up. So if you lose the game, you'd be like, okay, we need to do this. Well, you've had two tests. Now it comes time, like, like I tell people, like a gunslinger. Like, Rad, you can be the hottest and fastest gunslinger, but I can see your, your chink in your arm. I feel that I'm coming on, and one day I'm going to come and say, John, it's time to draw, baby. I'm challenging you to a duel. This is what the Cowboys got to take into that stadium. We're challenging you. We're going to show you that we're equal to you. As good as your defense is, our defense will be better. As nice as your offense is, our offense will be flawless. As good as your special teams is, we will make the plays. If you go in there with that attitude that you can win the game and you don't have penalties, that is what's going to kick you. That's what's going to turn this game. Penalties and the one or two turnovers. That is what has always decided the Dallas Cowboys and 49ers games. Yeah, I love your idea there, Nate, that it's not really a test in that a test is pass or fail, right? Yes, when you yes. guys faced the 49ers in that NFC championship game, that was a test. You yes. passed. That's they right. failed, right? So, so right. there you go. So there's no fail. I mean, you know, you might lose this game, but there's no fail because there's still a long season left That's and you'll right. likely right. meet them again in the playoffs. And, and, that is what it is. So uh, I really like that idea. Now, when you're talking about our defense against that 49er offense, oh, Brock Purdy, man, he went from irrelevant to unbelievable in such a short time. He was 20 out of 21 last week, Nate. One incompletion. Oh, McCaffrey's averaging 5.7 yards a carry. He's leading the NFL in that category. Is is I I can't believe how good – the Cowboys defense has been already this season with the exception of that Arizona game. Is it good enough to stop all of that? The question I have for everyone is Brandon Ayuk, number 11, the wide receiver. And we haven't even talked about Kittles. We haven't even talked about Kittles, but you have to stop McCaffrey. If you can't stop number 23, Mr. Do Everything, I, I, I'm mad at McCaffrey because you stay hurt uh, with, with, the, with the Carolina Panthers, and now we can't hurt you with the 49ers. See, like, he can't get injured. <laughs> like, he's got a, a, a halo around him. Uh, this kid is something special. And the way uh, their GM and their coach has went out and found a court. Let me, let me tell you what special rads. And this is what we had to admire about Jimmy. We have their quarterback of the future sitting on our bench. Yeah. They gave up three first-round picks. They said in their minds, we have to win now. Who is the guy? This guy had a 
bad shoulder. I saw how they had to do this kid's, I mean, excuse me, elbow. And this kid has come out and been amazing. Like you said, what was his stats last week? 20 out of 21. Come One on, One in completion. Yeah. Come on. He throwing it short. He throwing it deep. And this Brandon IU, let me tell you how we're going to have to do this defensively. We're going to have eight men, seven, eight men in the box all the time, first and second down. And you have to have a guy that's always looking at number 23. You're going to have to have a guy that's always looking at number 23 to keep an eye on this guy. To be, if he swing pass out, we got to have a guy that's athletic enough and quick enough to get out. And if he's a swing pass out the backfield, this guy is 5'11", 205 pounds, can run up in there like he's 225 pounds, can get outside like he's 195 pounds. This yeah. guy is special. I did not know how special. And that's why I always think when you have a coach that has the mindset like Coach Shanahan, who has the creativity to give you all the motions, all these different looks, and put his players one-on-one, with your with, with what he who can match up with it's two guys we can't match up with not play out the play that's Kittles and that's number 23 yeah so, yeah. so here we are yeah so who who is the best if you're going to spy right you're going to put a spy on McCaffrey who is our best candidate to be that spy and and hang with him as as much as is humanly possible your whole defense Okay, uh, and what I mean by that is lane integrity. If you got the A gap, you get the A gap. If you got the B gap, you got the B gap. If you setting the edge, you can't just be running up the field. You got to set the edge. You got to be kind of almost be slow in past situations to come off the ball. That way, you'll know what he's doing. Your linebackers, you you got to always have our nose tackle and our tackle always on their guys so guys can't leak off, especially in these screens, onto our linebackers because this guy is that special. So, you know, I say a spy, but it's our whole defense because okay. if you do something wrong, and, and, and Shanahan and his the guys up in the booth said, Coach Shanahan, look here, we got a guy ain't paying attention to the A gap. Or we got a guy that's uh, slanting down now off the defensive end, much like they did against the Cardinals. We got an undisciplined guy over here. Coach going to exploit that. He's not going to wait several plays. The next play, he is exploiting that with either Kittles or number 23, or McCaffrey. That's just how that's – Coach Van Quinn – it's limited only by the fact that if we don't stop the run, if we stop the run and, and, and just slow him down, then coach can put things in place. Coach DQ can become the mad scientist again. He can start throwing Parsons over here. This Sam Williams head right here. We can bring curse up to the line. We can start doing things. But if we don't stop the run, you limit your coach and what he can do up, up mentally for you. But if you stop the run, then we're in this game. All right, so then from an offensive perspective, we know this 49ers defense, you know, it's basically the 49ers or the Cowboys that most people think is the best defense in the NFL right now. Uh, So what do the Cowboys have to do with the, you know, look, I I call it the still developing Texas Coast offense, right, Nate? I don't know that we've seen everything that it can do quite yet. I think it's looked pretty good. There's a, you know, criticism, oh, it's boring. Heck! Your offense was pretty boring back in the day, but all you did was win, hand the ball to Emmett, hand the ball to Emmett, throw it to Mike, you know, where's Jay Novacek over here? You know, people called your offense boring. All you did was win with it. I got no problem with boring. I'm wondering what's the key to kind of break through that 49ers defense. We already have one. Go back and check your stats, people. I I, I want to say – all three wins, we had time of possession. I want to see, even in the loss, we had time of possession. When you can keep their offense limited to the certain snaps or how long they stay on the field without scoring six, because you want you give up three, but you don't want to give up six. If our offense can continue to do that right there, no turnovers. No turnovers. 
That is what has killed the Dallas Cowboys, the turnovers, be it an interception or a fumble. If the Cowboys continue to use uh, Tony Pollard the way they're using him, if Jake Ferguson continue to be the player that he is, now that gives us a two-way goal. And what I mean by that is the safety of your running back coming out of the backfield because he can catch coming out of the backfield. He can do screens. He can run inside. He can run outside. He is he is not an equal to McCaffrey because we don't know because only time would tell that with winning. But our tight end, he's not he's not Kittle, but he's re, he's reliable. He can block. He's tough. He can make the first guy miss once he catch the ball. And so that gives Dak always a safety net. If you watch the games of the 49ers, one thing uh, Mr. Irrelevant, who's very relevant, Brock Purdy does, yeah. he never hesitates yeah. to get the ball to 23. Too many quarterbacks don't, don't you know, they hear announce after announce, oh, that was a check now, oh, that was a check now. Well, if that's all you have and you have a supreme athlete in the backfield like both teams does, you don't think Tony can make somebody miss? He shows you every week that he can make a guy miss. So don't hesitate. It's better to, it's better to be third and three or four than third or seven. Third and six are sacked because you didn't want to get the little outlet to your, to your, to your running back or get the outlet to your tight end. You looking down the field. It, it'll come you, – you, this game, will, you will have shots in this game. They got a defensive backfield that is nice too. You, but you will have shots in this game. You just got to be smart when you take them. Yeah, I like the fact that this offense has inspired Dak – to be able to do a little bit more of what you're saying, Nate, as far as just getting rid of the ball quicker. He knows where he's going with it. He doesn't have to look around and scan the field much because it is kind of this precise get the ball out quick. Uh, and and you do, again, Cowboys have been, done a great job moving the ball between the 20s. It's once they get in that red zone, they've had a little trouble, obviously, all season long. But um, they're, they're able to, with this offense, move the ball quite a lot. I guess the next step, though, is figure out that red zone, too. Let, let me say this. The red zone is pay attention to detail. Number one, when you have a true threat of the run, when you have a true threat of the run, then your wide receivers become more valuable. A lot of people like to spread out. You, you can spread out all you want. You still ain't got but 10 yards. Once you get inside the five or the 10, that thing shuts down. And everything has to be precise and quick. But if you got linebackers that are scared that your fullback or your tight, uh, or your tight end is going to release quick inside or a quick slant or you got a running back that can hit up and then get you one or two yards, that's scary. And the way they got this push thing with the quarterback, everybody's getting better and better at it, that's scary. So now if you got that threat, now you drop back, boom, you, your out routes and your quick slants to your wide receivers become even more open because ain't nobody, everybody's focused. You got seven guys or maybe eight guys controlled and looking at uh, what's happening up front. I still say and if you can run for a score early, especially inside the 10 out of five, that things will happen good for you. Then it, it becomes easier because it's so congested. But if you don't do that, on the other hand, Rad, if you don't get in there and score, you throw three passes or you even run and you don't score, now that, that fires the defense up and they become alert to yeah. everything. And uh, it All right, gets so uh, I, the last thing I want to talk about, sort of about this game, but also um, about the, the league in general right now, is this push thing that you mentioned. I just can't stand it. But you're a former offensive lineman. Um, a – would you have liked to be a part of one of those big, you know, push convoys? B, B a yeah, scrum, yeah, the, like the, the rugby scrum. scrum, yeah. But or B, but do you do you yeah. like it? And then, and would you have liked to have been a part of one of those? As long as thirty-two teams have the ability to do it, if they choose to, I have no problem with it. You know, uh, it's so far only one team is mastered, and that is Philly. Now, what I'm beginning to see is. Uh, the rules clearly state that you can push from behind, but pull from the side. I've seen teams start to pull from the side. If I'm a coach, I'm noticing that. Say, hey, these dudes are pulling from the side. That's 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 not that's not right. But 
If you got the the beef up front and the manpower the, and the right leverage, I mean, do what you do. I mean, I have no I have no problem as long as thirty two teams have that. Now, if it showed to be guys getting, you know, the guys they thought guys would get injured, ain't nobody yeah. getting injured. He's getting your feelings hurt because you're getting dogged out. You're getting your feelings hurt. You know what I'm saying? It's, hey, as much hey, let me tell you something. And before I forget this, thank you, baseball, for uh, making pitchers pitch a little quicker. Oh, I, I man. Had to throw that yeah. in there. Thank you, yeah. baseball. It changed the game. What took yeah. so long? Yeah, it's Thank been you. it's that's been fantastic, <laughs> and it'll it'll continue through the playoffs and through the rest of our time watching it. I think they love it. Okay, one last topic about the NFL. It's the story of the NFL right mm-hmm. now, Nate. It is the fact yes, that sir. as many eyeballs as will be on the Cowboys and the 49ers this week, which will be a lot, it may not be as many as are on any game the Kansas City Chiefs play from here on out. Because by God, Taylor Swift might show up in the audience. The audience of that, you know how they can measure all these different audience segments. The audience segment right. of girls between like 15 and 24 watching the NFL this past weekend was up 53%. Taylor Swift is drawing a whole new crop of fans to the NFL, and it's unbelievable. And yet, and, and we're all kind of, whoa, 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 this is big. Man, it's been happening forever. Only thing that surprises me, it's a tight end because it's usually the quarterback that's dating that girl, right? (laughs) Troy dated Lori Morgan. Tony Romo with Carrie Underwood. You know, go back all the way to Joe Namath. He was with all them supermodels. Didn't uh, Terry Bradshaw had a famous (laughs) wife, you know? So all I'm saying, it's been happening forever. But uh, it is kind of a phenomenon, right, because of social media, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, I, like I said, I, it, it, y'all, please don't get Miss Swift can walk past me today, and I yeah. want to know the young lady. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I, I'm not into that. Uh, I, I, she's a she's a got to be a, either great singer, great performer, beautiful lady. What all three of us, one of the two, I don't know, but uh, that thing took off, man. And I just remember we used to have all yeah. type of stars, you know, Saudi Arabia princesses. And, but these, you know, I guess the money don't matter because he richer than she is still to this day. But she's a, I guess she's a beautiful young lady. She's a great entertainer. And uh, the hot thing right now is KC, yeah. you know. But just imagine the views you would have got if that was Mahomes' girl. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Man. That thing would be yeah. wow. It's yeah. wow now. Yeah. I mean, uh, we was talking off air, man. How you know a few people, man, that will uh, spend their life savings to get to see her. I mean, I, you know, I thought Michael Jordan, excuse me, Michael Jackson was the greatest entertainer in all the world. But I, I wouldn't spend so much money to go see see him and so hey i I, get your money girl yeah why not and (laughs) let me just ask that'll be the final thing here nate for our our, uh let me tell you something which i love i love this uh tell me um if you believe that it is some sort of a distraction to the players because you did you had the prince of saudi arabia parading around the sideline you had gary Busey was always with the team he was an actor who was well known like i say you know guys had girlfriends who were famous and that type of thing it it, does that become a distraction to the team or is that way overblown by everybody else it's way overblown because Kelsey is yeah. a star. Kel- Kelsey will not get the people that Miss Swift would get, but Kelsey in his own right is a star. Uh, Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman, in our day, when we went to California, we did not lack for attention. So, uh, But we understood what our job was. As Miss Swift, you know, she, 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 if she had to perform at halftime, you know, she'll probably tell Kelsey, Hey, homeboy, I get with you yeah, when this yeah. is over. I mean, professionals can focus. Like, you take your Rangers, you know, like I say, the Rangers uh, don't care who's watching, not watching. They, they had a hiccup one day, and the next day, they throwing shut out innings. You know what I'm saying? Scott throwing seven shut out innings. Hey, the focus is you're a professional. Do your job. As Coach Belichick would say, as Coach Johnson would say, as Coach Parcells would say, let me tell you something. Do your job. Fantastic. Nate, let me tell you something. <laughs> I enjoyed this so much. And let me tell you something else. Let's do it again right. next week. We will, man. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rad. 